Hey, welcome to another edition of Q It Up with the Q Brothers. I'm John Quattrucci. And I'm Ralph Quattrucci. This is us right You're there. You're not rocking to the music like usual, Ralph. Ah, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little, What's little, that? I'm a, little, I'm a little toned down. This is a, not a serious thing, but it's, you know, different. So. Well, we are doing this uh, a little earlier than we normally do. It's uh, five o'clock right now. Yeah, we usually still, do them around seven, eight o'clock. It's still bright so, out. So uh, you're not lubed up, obviously. So, or maybe you are. I don't know. No. <laughs> I mean, Sunday's five. Who knows? Oh, you mean drunk? Yeah. No, no. The bottle caps. Uh, uh, the so anyway, caps. so yeah. so uh, anything going on with you this week that you want to talk about? Usually it's the last couple of times it's been no. No, so well, I can. Anyway. I have an announcement to make. I'm no longer a contracted worker at National Geographic. I'm now an official Disney employee. You're and, working for Disney now. Well, Disney owns National Geographic as well as many other things. And, uh, you know, I've been- So con- you, were, you were a subcontractor- Basically, well, Geographic hired a contractor who hired us, so we were considered contract workers. And we didn't like our email was, it wasn't official Ralph.Quartucci at National Geographic. We had all these other little acronyms that basically said that you were a contractor. Well, this week during COVID, so it's pretty wild, uh, they brought us all on as Disney employees. So now I'm an official So you are a Disney employee now? Officially. Yes. So, um, so I guess, okay. So I no think I have to keep trash. the language. Yeah. I think the language yeah, has no to be. No more trash in any Disney movies. I love uh, all I don't Disney think movies. I can mention lesbians now anymore, maybe. It, well, uh, you I can, but you got to say lesbians. And, but like I don't that. think one of our 21 viewers is anybody at Disney. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm actually not too worried, to be honest. So that was an exciting thing that happened this week. One of them. Well, that's good. So that also gives you stability, right? Because now you're going to be a full time, you're going to be well, a full time employee. I was always full time. You weren't full time, but well, uh, for a, there's no doubt about you'll be with them for a while, right? Well, there was never that doubt. The contracting was always full time, but now I'm an official part of. So some of us were contracted, and some of us were Disney employees. So it was a mix of both. Now we're all flat out Disney employees. So, so that's okay. that's great. It's good. It's good. Well, very yeah. good. So you do. You have to be real careful about what you say. But anyway, uh, working for them a little bit. Uh, but and that's good. Congratulations. I'm happy you. for you. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, as you can so see. So for me today was the day I was supposed to be on a plane to start my live training for a client. And that got postponed till September. Mm. So I was very bummed about that because there seemed to be a little light at the end of the tunnel. But fate works in mysterious ways because the first market I was supposed to hit was Houston. Oh, yeah, that wouldn't have worked. I <laughs> know uh, it wouldn't have worked. So it wouldn't have happened. Right. So uh, <laughs> it's funny the way things work out, isn't it? So uh, I was pretty excited about getting back out there, but the timing of it would have been pretty awful. So now I got to wait till September. Were you on, correct me if I'm wrong, were you on the flight on 9-11? It wasn't the flight that- No, no. I was on- The day before? The week before I took that flight to California. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear the story that Seth MacFarlane missed that flight? Yeah. (laughs) I I had some friends who worked, I had some friends who worked at Best Buy that were supposed to be on that flight. Now, let me ask you this. Would you, would you have rather been on the flight yesterday that the engine failed or the house that the engine fell on in Colorado? <laughs> That's just a little question I have. <laughs> I can't believe uh, I don't think anybody got hurt, right? Nobody. Everybody survived, I guess. I don't know. Luckily, nobody doesn't. They showed another video of another chunk coming down and hitting a neighborhood, just hitting the ground. <laughs> No, you know, God. I got to tell you, I've been, I've been the only thing I've ever experienced, uh, and I traveled a lot yeah. for thirty years. I mean, uh, tons of flights. Uh, one time, we uh, we were landing, and something happened, and they had to abandon the landing. So we were almost on the ground. All of a sudden, the pilot <laughs> cranks it to eleven, and we took off. And it was, and he got on here. Let me explain what happened. But that's it. I've never had anything. No, I've never lucky. hit bad yeah. turbulence. I've never, I mean, nothing. So uh, I just can't was, imagine looking out the window and seeing that uh, engine on fire. I mean, no, because I, 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 I hate flying, and that would just be the that would just. Well, go. after nine eleven, I had I had a meeting. Uh, it was three weeks later, three weeks, and the guy called me and said, "Would you rather not do it? You know, you're not comfortable getting on a plane." And I said to him, "Look, if I don't get on a plane this week." I don't think I'll ever get on a plane again. Right. And I did. And we actually had to fly over New York and you could see the building oh still smoking God. up. It's crazy. Yeah. But, but crazy. it's like, you know, uh, uh, you know, you started looking around when you were on the plane, you're looking around and like, if something happened, what would I do? What could I use? Well, there was that to, time to after. Know? Yeah. There was, 
always you're checking everybody out as they're walking. Oh yeah, in, so. yeah, everybody. And I was doing, you know, but and yeah. that's, but that's here and there. I mean, but yeah. now it's not, it's not yeah. quite the same. So. But uh, that was that was freaky. But anyway, so so Ralph, here, here's what we're going to do this week. So uh, Ralph came up to visit us uh, last weekend. He mm-hmm. stayed with my wife and I, and he brought his significant other, Maria. And uh, mm. I got to tell you, it was. Looking at Ralph, it was absolutely adorable. Mm-hmm. They were so cute together. Mm-hmm. And he was just, it's just a side of Ralph I haven't seen very often. And mm-hmm. it was adorable. And Ralph, she was a sweetheart. Thank you. Uh, Rose and I both thought she was a sweetheart. And the folks did too, by the way. Okay. Um, so we'll be, well, because I'll, I'll, I'll of that. pass that along. I'm thrilled to let her know that. Well, she, oh, that's right. She doesn't watch it. So uh, anyway, uh, because of that and because how you were a little puppy dog, which oh, was adorable, yeah. I decided... We should do romantic comedies, rom-coms uh, this week. It's funny. We so, just did, wait a minute, on Movie Strange, we just did Black History Month. And I'm not going to lie, I feel even weirder doing this than three white guys doing the, the Black History Month. This seems like not appropriate for, I don't understand, but I'll do it. Wh- why? I, 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 no, no, I, no. I put I on my, listen, why? I put on my warm, fuzzy sweater. I got the Miller Lite, which feels like I, a fire. Do you fire. feel you're not a romantic guy, Ralph? I mean, I understand why you're no, saying No, I that. definitely, romantic comedies definitely get to me more than I expect. Okay. So well, why, the, why do you not think I, it's I don't know. I just, we're old. <laughs> well, I will so, say, uh, that'd be the biggest. watching you as almost a senior that you are. Yeah, I can't get my shot, though. Bit, I'm too healthy for a shot. It reminded a little bit of Cocoon, you know, after oh. they went in the pool and the oh, pods. Oh, yeah. It was adorable. Yeah, anyway, that's exactly so, how it for those who uh, who do watch the show, you know how this works, but we're going to uh, recommend three rom-com movies. Mm-hmm. Or these are the three we think you should watch. We'll show you the previews from them. And it always leads to branches of other movies that we'll also talk about. But these are the three that we recommend. If you want a good romantic comedy, this is what you should watch. And again, you might feel differently or you might agree. Let us know in the comments section. And as always, and you've been doing a better job of it, subscribe like it and share it yeah, it really right does there. make a difference right to try middle. to experience yeah right yeah. there right look at that we've got fancy graphics now okay we got we got written theme songs for us and we've got fancy graphics it doesn't get much better the money we're throwing into guys. this thing is insane the money no we're getting out of it is spared. zero <laughs> and when i say no expense i mean zero literally expense almost in the red. none right in the red production right so uh, now if, uh, and, I have a technical way, when you question. Leave comment, okay. When you leave comments, I just want to say this. A lot of you leave comments on Facebook. And what I'd like you to do is leave comments on YouTube because that's where you're watching it. You can leave them in both, but we would prefer on YouTube. What were you going to say, Ralph? Sorry to interrupt. Technically, do you want to <laughs> watch the whole trailer or should, can we talk over the trailer? What do you want to do? We can. T- well, I, what I'd like to do is watch a little bit of the trailer because okay. I know some, like some of the old ones tend to be long. Yeah. So we'll watch a little bit of it, and then we can just jump in. Okay. If that'll work for I'll you. have my uh, my producer who's doing the switching. I'll let him know. Yeah, uh, we're okay. going to watch part of the trailer. Bring it down Talk a little bit producer. so we can talk. That's my idea. Okay, as okay. always, Ralph, because this particular show, unlike the seven others that you currently do, this is my little, uh, my little world. Mm-hmm. So go first. Uh, and I do not – Ralph knows what I picked, but I do not know what Ralph picked. So well, – uh, mm. Ralph, Ralph, first, did you pick Clute? I did not pick Clute, although that's okay. a beautiful comedy. I definitely wrong. thought you were going to pick Clute, I don't think, but let's... Yeah, it's romantic, but I don't think it's a comedy, so it didn't quite hit well, the... Well, I, I actually laughed through the whole movie. And you're so. right. I should have picked Bound. I completely forgot about Bound with uh, Gina Gershorn and um, uh, Tillis. Meg, uh, Tilly, uh, not uh, Tilly. Meg. Uh, uh, Meg Tilly. Yeah, Tilly. Yeah. Jennifer, uh, nice, was it Meg Tilly? Yeah, nice yeah. lesbian plumber. Gina Gershorn plays a lesbian plumber who has an affair with uh, the mall of a gangster. It's just quite a beautiful love story, actually. And I forgot about that one. So thanks for bringing that up. So we'll show that. I thought for sure, knowing your taste, that would be the one. I completely forgot. I was looking for actually. you did not pick love actually. Truthfully, I was looking for a lesbian one to throw at you. And that would have been it if I remembered. No, love actually made the uh, uh, number four. Holiday movie. Number four. Oh, oh, Okay. My, I have three of them. Two of them star the same person, which is fascinating. And then one of them's a new one, which I don't think you've seen because I asked you about it, and I think it's fantastic. All right. So the two, this is not in any particular order. Here are the three I picked. Okay. I'll do it. I think I'll do it in date order. Um, Say Anything, starring John Cusack. Uh, yeah. Uh, high, high Fidelity, starring John Cusack. Oh. And the last one is Yesterday. 
Oh, uh, I have starring, not seen that. Let me see. Let me see if I can say his name right. Himesh Patel <laughs> plays the lead with Lily James. Those are my yeah. three. And what we'll do is we'll show a little trailer from each one, and uh, we'll start with the oldest, which is Say Anything, directed by Cameron Crowe. Cameron Crowe, yeah. And again, it stars John Cusack, uh, Ioki Sky, Ioki. John Mahoney. John Mahoney and yeah. uh, Joan Cusack, who gets an uncredited uh, role as uh, as his brother, as her. Well, as my favorite brother. in that was his uh, sister. No, no, not this. Uh, I'm going to screw up the name. Uh, Lily, is it? Yeah, Lily. I forget her last name. <laughs> Lily Taylor. Is that Lily her name? Taylor might be her name. No, well, I, I, totally, I know. I know exactly who you're talking it's about. Part of our stick. That'll yeah, no, never it's... be me. That'll never be me. That'll never. That's my favorite. Lil, Lil Taylor movie. is her name. Lil Taylor. Lil Taylor. All right, sorry. All right, so we'll show okay. a little bit of say anything. Say anything. And here we are. You can talk if you want. Take out Diane Cordy. Look at how young he looks. Yes. There she is. Trapped in the body of a game show hostess. We don't want to see you get hurt. I want to get hurt. <laughs> there she is. I think she's uncredited. Joan is uncredited in this. She's uncredited? Yeah, I think so. Um, now, the amazing thing, I mean, this is sort of a graduate uh, homage, yeah. homage, because he does this whole scene with this John Mahoney, where Mahoney asks him, you know, what's your plan in life? And, and Dobler's right. like, Lloyd Dobler's like, I don't want to do anything, make anything, touch anything that has anything to do with plastic. He does this whole table dinner speech. I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to sell anything. anything. Right. Um, so, and he's just... Since uh, I can't figure it out, I'm just going to hang with your daughter. Right. And now, Cusack, of course, is just a super likable dude. I just love watching any of his films. And he's getting a little bit straight to, straight to uh, video stuff lately. Yeah. Um, but this one was... Uh, this came out in... Uh, 1989. Yeah. Um, and the and famous Cameron scene. Cameron Crowe wrote it. Yes, Cameron Crowe oh, also did? wrote it. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So the famous scene in this one, of course, is the holding up the the boombox right. over his head. And what I've come to learn, because I listened to the director's track, and the the song that you hear in the film, the Peter Gabriel song, is not the song that they. Is that Matthew McConaughey? No, who's no? These are the guys no. at the store. God, you really got a crush on him. Matthew McConaughey or, or yeah. Lloyd? Matthew um, McConaughey. He's 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 a good good actor. That other um, kid sitting anyway. next to the guy who looked like Matthew McConaughey was the bad guy in The Rock. In The Rock? He was one of the he was one of the There it is. Okay, so did. that scene yeah. Yeah. which they had to shoot it, the sun was going down, they shot it in one take. And of course oh, Cusack goes through that. this whole thing about his motivation holding that up and what he had to go through to do all that, which is just actors you actors crack me up. With all the stuff that you guys talk about, and kind well, of the, now the scenes, this has one of the best it, endings in film, uh, which is this scene you're seeing right there, and I won't give airplane. it away on the airplane. And the way the button that they use to end the film is just is just terrific. What do you know? What song was originally used instead? I of the do Peter not know. Gabriel I do not know. I, I didn't deep. I didn't dive in that deep. But the Gabriel song obviously went on to become you know iconic for that particular scene. And then the rest is history. It's just a well, sweet it's film. It's parodied on everything. I yeah, mean, that, it's a sweet film, parodied. and that's that people can buy that statue, right? Yeah. That thing and all that. Um, just a sweet film, and that gets me into the next John Cusack film called High Fidelity, which is a Nick Nick Hornsby wrote the book, and is actually based on um, someone's obsession with love. I was going to say Nick Hornsby also wrote the one that Jimmy Fallon. The baseball film that Jimmy Fallon did, which pitch? yes, which was actually based on a soccer movie. He converted it for a yeah. foot baseball film. Anyway, I so didn't know that. Yeah. He wrote this story. Stephen Fears directed the movie called High Fidelity, and it's about John Cusack again. His sister Joan is in there again. It also stars Tim Robbins, Jack Black. Um, Jack Black wasn't this cannot, Jack Black's first movie. I think it might be his first official yeah. film because he did he yeah. did a bunch. Now I don't I can't again. I'm not going to pronounce this Swedish woman's name. His love interest, I've been the Jack. I mean, I'll just show it. I can't say it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, uh, Todd Luisco, which is, I think, is the little buddy that's uh, hanging out with Jack Black. Yes, it made Jack Black famous. And Jack Black also sings that song at the end. I can't think of the name of the song right off the top of my head that nobody thought he was going to pull off, and he just pulled it off beautifully. It's actually on the soundtrack, which, by the way, the soundtrack of this film is amazing. My store is called Championship Vinyl. And it's Breaking a, you know, the fourth wall. Yep. And <laughs> that's the Jack. Look how young. He right. looks so young too. And um, 
<laughs> it's so good. So it's about John Cusack, who breaks up at the beginning of this film with his love of his life. And he goes back and looks back on all the relationships that he had in his life that he either broke up with or they broke up with him, and he reexamines his whole life. Lil Taylor's also in this one. There she is. He dated her back in college or something. And Catherine Zeta-Jones played this like real hot girlfriend that he was wondering who broke up with who. Just, just fantastic film. And uh, that that ends up being his his girlfriend right there, who he breaks up with. And Tim Robbins ends up dating. And there's some great scenes with Tim. You know, Tim Robbins and him are buddies. Cusack and him go back way back oh, in Chicago. Yeah, go in Chicago. So he's this guy. He plays a real creepy, <laughs> creepy like vegan or something. I don't know. Yeah, there's Joan again. So it made Jack Black famous. Actually, it put him in. It it, it rocketed him to stardom. <laughs> and they play record record store snobs. Just yeah. fantastic. But the love story in this is really nice. It it uh, really that was Lisa ends Bonet, on a, wasn't it? Was yeah. that Lisa Bonet? Yeah. She plays a singer that John Cusack dates a little bit. Um, but as a love story, it's it's quite sweet and uh, a bit of a tearjerker. And again, the album, the soundtrack is just incredible. Does he end up with the girl? Do I? Should I give it away? It came out in. Uh, well, let's, how, see. Uh, let's see. When was this movie? Uh, Two thousand. Oh, what year was this movie? Two thousand. Is this going to be a big spoiler? I'm going to say yes. Yes, he ends up with the girl. But really, honestly, the best scene, one of the best scenes, is Jack Black through the whole film, is setting up a band like a heavy metal grungy band, and you think at the end. So uh, Cusack plays a DJ. And he has a, and he ends up working with these two kids that actually stole records, but turned out to be good musicians. So he puts them on a label that he's going to do. And Jack Black is at the party to introduce these kids, and he convinces John Cusack to let him play at the party. And they don't know what's going to happen. And he comes out and he sings this beautiful. I can't think of the artist's name. You're too kind. Rob, thank you for the enthusiastic intro, but we're no longer called Sonic Death Monkey. Uh, we're on the verge of being called uh, Kathleen Turner Overdrive. However, this evening we will be Barry Jive and the Uptown Five. Um, oh my God, it's terrible. Uh, he got shot by his well, father. Fix, Ralph, he got shot by both. his father. Who's that guy? Who's the guy? He African. Got shot by his father. Yeah, that's terrible, but that's. Oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh my God! Oh See, that's what God. I mean. Two white guys trying to do the Buddy it. Holly story. Uh, no, no, the Buddy Holly story. I'm not. Oh my God! Uh, I'm gonna look it up. It's killing me now. Okay, we're gonna take a pause. I'm gonna edit this. Sam, this is, Sam. No, no, oh, not okay. Sam. I know. I it's not Sam. Here, I'm gonna Google. <laughs> this is awful. Set talk here. Talk. Say something. Oh, talk. Okay. Uh, I hate the fact that you didn't do enough research to tell me who the oh, person was at the end of the film. I was going to do it. That's I was, pretty lame. I was setting up the, the uh, whole... Uh, I, uh, I'm starting to do notes now because I don't want to do this. <laughs> We're spending, well, I, can, I, I can thought it was Sam Cooke. No? No. It's terrible. I can't... Uh. Shot by his father or he shot his father? Oh, Marvin Gaye? Marvin Gaye, thank you! <laughs> Let's get it on. Okay. Let's, Let's get, get it on. on. And Jack Black okay. kills well, it. Kills it. Okay? Ten minutes of our life we can't I will, get back. Uh, yeah. I'll play that. I'll cover it up. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The last film is, uh, let's see, what year did this one come out? This one came out in 2019, so it's definitely uh, very uh, recent. It's called Yesterday. Oh, Yesterday. And like yeah. I said, directed by Danny O'Boyle and uh, starring Himesh Patel, Lily James in the lead. And it's about... I don't know. Do you know the concept of this film? I do. Uh, the Beatles don't exist. They has, there's a blackout, a worldwide blackout. And when everybody wakes up, there's only one person that knows the Beatles and knows that they sang, and it's this kid. And it's all about his rise to fame and how he's handling the fact that he knows that he's basically cheating. He's cheating. He's, you know, he's using stuff that he didn't do, but nobody knows that. And it's, it's quite an affecting little film. Well, let me ask you this. Do the Beatles, do the Beatles exist? In this world, when there's a blackout, not after the blackout. 
Okay, so they don't even exist. Coca-Cola doesn't exist. Cigarettes don't oh. exist. So throughout the film, little things get dropped. And there's even this little button at the end where uh, they end up getting together, spoiler alert. And, sh- and he says, I feel like Harry Potter. This is after everything had happened. And he's admitted. Oh, and she goes, well, and she goes who's Harry, Harry Potter? Potter? And you see, his, <laughs> you see his eyes go, oh, I could I'll do it again. watch that right. movie. It's very good. So here's, here's a he, he sings. Is he a good singer? Yeah, very good. If it has happened by now, it's like a now this guy's been in a bunch of stuff since this. She's adorable, of course. Lily James. I don't recognize just, you. you don't recognize her? Him. Oh, uh, he was in the scene in Tenet, in the airplane scene. He was the air, the guy in the boat at the end that's with the binoculars. Oh, that's him? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. All my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay Oh, I believe in yesterday It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Why did you write that? I didn't write it. Paul McCartney wrote it. The Beatles. Who? Exactly. <laughs> John, Paul, George and Ringo, the Beatles. No. Stop it. Yesterday. It's one of the greatest songs ever written. Well, it's not Coldplay. It's not Fix You. <laughs> it's not you Coldplay. You don't know who the Beatles are. Genuinely. And I'm in a really, really, really complicated situation. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Sorry, I'm just listening to Jack's new song. What's this one called? Uh, leave it be. Let it be. Well, rock on, Jack. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, we should talk. See, we pay, and you write songs, and then you make a ton of money. And then we take most of it. <laughs> she plays herself. She's doing herself. Yeah. to write something right now. This is not in the film. It's too bad because it looks like it's a nice scene. How do you do it? Why would they show this in the trailer? I, I don't know. They do another scene where they say, "I've got two people here, right here. They're going to do it." Where uh, he says, "I got two former people here who say you wrote stole their songs." Not in the film. I'm a school teacher, and you are the world's greatest. So he sings all the songs solo. Yeah, yeah. So it's got a great soundtrack. Listen, obviously. what it does, uh, you know, I said it's, this is a love, okay, right here. This is not in the film. Wow. Well, it is, but they play it up like it's going to be more than it is. Um, like I said, it's a love story because obviously it's a rom-com, but it's also, it's a love story to the Beatles. I mean, you really, you walk out of this and you go, I got to get more Beatles stuff. Ed Sheeran has a big dude. role in this too. He's really funny. Hey, dude, are you sure? Hey, hey dude. dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see now, I want to watch this yeah. one. Oh, that looks great. It's it's super good. And um, do you know who direct? Oh, who, did did you say? Yeah, who uh, Daniel Boyle. Oh, Daniel Boyle. Daniel Boyle. Um, it's got such heart and such. You know, the love story is a typical rom com. You know, they're going to end up together. There's no question about that. But it's the love story about the Beatles that comes through. Yeah. Uh, and there's a scene in here, I'm not going to give away that. I know we spoil a bunch, but I just would rather not. Uh, that just gets, it's just, just an amazing, amazing thing. And you walk away, like I said, you want to go and listen to Beatles again. Uh, because it's well, all about... Say, it probably reminds you how many good songs the Beatles it, have. You what forget. it does is, there's a line about the world would be a worse place if the Beatles weren't in it. And it, it, it's, it just hits it. It hits it. Nails it out of the park. I think it's fantastic. So I and feel that way about Air Supply. <laughs> Air supply is you know, pretty good. Don't knock lost air supply. In love and I don't I'll know. So, now I'll just I'll throw you some on my B list, okay? Okay. Now one of them I loved, and I'm really having trouble because even there's a documentary coming out on HBO that's going to really never I'll never watch this again. But Annie Hall is a classic, and well, as a matter why, of fact, why? well Woody Allen, there's a doc about oh oh you know, well what with him and his. And it's one of those, do you, do you blame the artist Except for his art? I don't know what to do. But anyway, Annie Hall, which is definitely one of your films, is, an, is basically an Annie, you know, a homage yeah. to Annie Hall, kind of. Yeah. Uh, knocked Up. That's a good call. Well, knocked, knocked Up. Knocked Up. With Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. Uh, Working Girl. 
Working oh, Girl. I love Working Girl. Right, with Melanie Ford. Griffith and yeah. Harrison Ford. And another Melanie Griffith was uh, Something Wild with Jeff Daniels. Oh. Which is Ray Liotta. It, it gets a little dark. That was Ray's first well, film, and it that, went uh, a little dark. Oh, that's not Ray Liotta's first film. Yes, I think it was first and major he was nuts film in that movie. Yeah, he yeah. was he was fantastic. Uh, a crossover, Jerry Maguire, good rom com. Lo- love we, Jerry. We Maguire. did in our football version. You had me at hello. Another one. Have you ever seen P.S. I Love You? No. Gerard Butler, Hilary Swank, and uh, Harry Connick Jr. And what happens is, uh, he uh, Hilary Swank's boyfriend husband husband gerard butler dies early on he gets sick and dies and then it's about him sending her a letter every year that he has that he has he reads to her telling her you need to move on you know it's just a really quite affecting film harry connick jr plays a guy that's in, interested in her and it's a story about how they get together and everything it's just really sweet uh broadcast news classic rom-com you know on top of everything else forgetting sarah marshall Oh, jeez. Okay. With, uh, Full frontal nudity. I can't think of his name. Out. Jason Siegel. And yeah. it, it, it no, introduced yeah. Russell Brand to the world with that crazy rock yeah. star he was playing. Uh, there's something about Mary. It's a good rom com. Ah, good one. Yeah, right. And the last one, I'm, oh, Love Actually, we knew that. Uh, the Princess Bride. Uh, Princess Bride is like, that's, that should be on top because that, that, that spans generations. I think everybody wow. loves that film. So. Those are my uh, Groundhog Day. Well, Another one. That's Last a good one. call right there. Yeah. I, I'm surprised. Nothing with Kevin Costner. Uh, Very surprising. Yeah. And no. I thought for sure you would have said Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. I was going to, but you guys said I couldn't, but that's definitely yeah. a romantic no, comedy. No I doubt didn't say about that. it. No doubt. But Bound is the one. That. Bound is the one I wish I had remembered. Oh. Because that's really Well, good. I like your list. Okay, Very good. diverse list, by the yes, way. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to give you my three in no particular order. Okay. Since you already brought it up, uh, kind of like Annie Hall, when Harry met Sally, 1989, Billy Crystal, Meg Ryan, Carrie Fisher, Bruno Kirby, directed by Rob Reiner, and it's actually based on Rob Reiner's post-divorce life when he got back into the dating scene. It's also written by Nora Ephron. Right. Um, in fact, uh, Meg Ryan's character, you know how she was picky with the food? I'd like the stuff on the side. That was all Nora Ephron. That's wow. what she actually did. So it was written in the script. So you want to show it? And it's got show a couple little- of the most, cla- well, the most classic line that came out of it was came out of Rob Reiner's mother's mouth, which is I'll have what she's having. But and do you that remember- sign is now in that restaurant. I, do you I'll remember the scene where Bruno Kirby's explaining how he and his, he and, uh, Carrie Fisher, they're married or whatever. And he goes, and you love the wagon wheel table. And she goes, I've always hated the wagon wheel table. And the next scene is him rolling it out on the sidewalk. I mean, it's just, this is a fantastic film. And men and women can't be friends because no man can be friends with a woman that he finds attractive. He always wants to have sex with her. So you're saying that a man can be friends with a woman he finds unattractive. I mean, and I don't know what happened to Meg Ryan in her career, but I absolutely loved her in this. Well, movie. she had this run with no, all this stuff she was doing here with Tom Hanks, all the romantic yeah. comments where she had a run. But Billy Crystal also, the, the, the chemistry between these two, you can't create. I mean, this had to. I mean, Rob Reiner must have shit himself when he realized what was going on here. They wanted a bunch of different people. Uh, in fact, uh, they wanted they they asked Molly Ringwald to play Sally. Really? She couldn't do it because of scheduling. So that's when Meg Ryan came in, and it wasn't wow. Billy Crystal. Tom Hanks turned it down. Michael Keaton turned it down. Oh wow! Uh, but I mean, how do you put this chemistry together to mix this thing and make this happen? Like I said, Rob Reiner must just have been like, holy crap. I mean, cause well, you know, you like this scene right here with, right. Uh, when the camera goes I and know. sees his face. I oh know. my God, it's insane! But, but that last scene, uh, New Year's Eve, yeah. where he starts saying, "You know, I started thinking about you, the way you order food, and you know, this is a this, great this scene." This scene is classic. Yeah, sixty-six takes to wow. get this scene right. Wow. Long story short, we did it. Yeah, it's amazing. They did it. Challenge. I'm difficult. He's and uh, too uh, completely closed off. the music, yeah. I, I never heard of Harry Connick till this movie. Wow, and well, the music is fantastic. Well, well, someday I'll be for it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's out there. Charlie Chaplin had babies when he was 73. Yeah, but he was too old to pick them up. <laughs> yeah, you can't get the chemistry like yeah, this. We'll never, this we'll never date again, let alone sleep with somebody. Oh, I slept with her. Yeah. I slept with her anyway. So I love this movie, that last scene. And again, for me, romantic comedies at the end, 
that last scene where look most romantic comedies you know they're going to get together so how do they do that in the movie and does it resonate and that scene old anxiety is playing and they were and billy crystal realizes how much he loves her and just the way they're looking at each other i'm getting chills just talking about yeah. it i love this movie i love the music in the movie it is hilarious the dialogue is great and the whole concept of it can men and women be friends women believe men and women can be friends men <laughs> Billy Crystal, well, it's always there in the back of your mind. Yeah. Always. And the other touching thing they did is that that thing they did where they interviewed people, all, older couples. Well, which, who were real, real married people. couples. And yeah. it just, you know, uh, that's yeah. what I mean. It, they go back and forth, and ultimately they end up having that interview with these two. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just a it's just beautiful film. And like I said, the chemistry, uh, you can't predict that. And it's just like, yeah. I always say this. Other than trope, the other thing I always say is lightning in a bottle, and they had lightning in a bottle with these two, and yeah, and, and it was a big it. hit. Yeah. The so. sad thing is Carrie Fisher's gone, right? Nora Bruno. Efron's gone, Bruno, Kir Bruno yeah. Kirby's gone, and they all died relatively yeah, young. Bruno died very. So young. When you watch that yeah. movie, it's kind of sad. Yeah. But that's my that's my first one. Again, these are no particular right. order. The the second one, uh, as you know, I'm a classic film guy. In yes, fact, Ralph uh, brought up uh, he thought I was going to pick his girl Friday. Which, by the way, is a great or call. the other one. It happened one night. That's the other one I thought was going to come down. I have that on yeah. my B list. Okay, uh, but what I picked was the Philadelphia Story, oh. nineteen forty. Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart, directed by George Cukor. Go ahead, Ralph, run it because I'm going to talk a little bit yeah, about it's this. A long trailer. We'll so. let a little bit play. Yeah. These old trailers tend to go on long. So what's the deal here? The the, the, the patter? Is it the patter in this film? What made this thing such it's a... It's the rapid fire dialogue, right. which was typical of the uh, screwball comedies of the 30s and 40s. But this this particular movie, this was a Broadway play that Katherine Hepburn starred in. Right. And it was a big hit on Broadway. But when, when they went to make this movie, Katherine Hepburn was considered box office poison because uh, her last few films did really, really poorly. So at the time, she was involved with Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes bought the rights of the play to make a movie. She was dating and Howard Catherine Hughes? Had, is, that, is that what you mean by yeah. involved? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she had complete control over this, who got cast, who the director was, and Cary Grant got $137,000 for this movie and he wanted top billing. And they gave it to him because, like I said, she was considered box office poison. He donated the entire salary to the British War Relief Fund. The thing about this movie, dialogue is rapid fire. She is great. He is hilarious. Jimmy Stewart actually won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. He is so funny in this movie. And this was, uh, you know, he had done Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Uh, he did this. I mean, this really catapulted him. But it's just... If you like the screwball comedies of the 30s and 40s, and Catherine Hepper and I put up there with Betty Davis as one of the best female actresses. Like, let me rephrase that. One of the best actors. Doesn't matter female or male. Uh, just outstanding. And it's just, they're great. Uh, it's a funny, funny movie. And at the end, uh, for those who don't know what the movie is, uh, Catherine Hepburn's character is getting remarried. Ca uh, Cary Grant was her old husband. Cary Grant gets Jimmy Stewart, a reporter, to do a story on the wedding, to try to muck it up. So he comes in there, and the, the, the guy she's engaged to, that guy on the left, is a real tool. And Cary Grant recognizes that. Everybody recognizes The father recognizes that. And Cary Grant weasels his way in. At the end of the movie, they end up getting married. So it all, it all this is a long trailer. Who, they, who gets married? She marries Cary Grant? She ends up remarrying Cary Grant at the end of the movie. Okay. He plays C.K. Dexter. What a name. But didn't he just shove her in a doorway or something? What's that yeah, scene where because he she her? broke his golf clubs. Oh, last Oh, she's, but you know, that's a little rough, isn't it? Don't she marched outside with his age? golf clubs. Oh, my took goodness. Took him out, snapped him over his knee, then ran back in the house. Oh. She, he goes after it and pushes her through the doorway. Nice. Wow. That's so good. But this movie, this movie is all their favorites. They all talked about how much fun it was yeah. to make. I don't know. I, I'd have to watch this to see if I get past the... I mean, if it's really rapid fire and it's funny and Jimmy it Stewart's funny... It's, I, not, I get, it's not... What you don't like about the old movies is the over-the-top yeah, acting. Yeah, I can't stand it. It's not like that. Okay. It's uh, it's very fast -paced. And Cary Grant's funny? Cary Grant's funny. Yeah, he's hilarious. Oh. He's very funny. Okay. But Look, he's, he's, he's also very everybody. suave. He's, 
throwing yeah. punches at everybody. Yeah. I don't know about that. We'll have to check this one out. It's excellent. It's excellent. What year did it come uh, out? Pay attention. Uh, at one point, Jimmy Stewart's playing drunk. Oh. And in the scene, he hiccups. And it wasn't scripted that way. And they did it in one take. And Cary Grant pretty much breaks character and starts cracking up. And they left it in because it looked so funny. But again, if you like the old movies, this is a great romantic comedy. Love this movie. Love Catherine Hepburn. Love Cary uh, I'm Grant. I'm sorry. What year did it come out? Did you say that? Uh, this was 1940. Okay. And what were the and, standards and like? Also, what were the standards like back then? Could they... Uh, it, it was, it was, uh, the Hayes commission was formed. So stand, they had a, they got a little tricky with the dialogue. There's a couple of scenes. There's some innuendo mm. that they had to deal with, but like bound uh, innuendo, yeah, it was, like it was in, pretty innuendo, like in bound that kind of innuendo or yeah. Like, right yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Like some kind of <laughs> lesbian thing. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying innuendo. You went lesbian. I work for Disney now. Well, you shouldn't you be said saying bound, that. Ralph. Couldn't, okay, bound. You shouldn't be saying okay. that stuff. Uh, but oh. I love this movie. Uh, I, Ralph, I even think you I even think you would enjoy it. I and, will give it a look. And after that, Catherine Hepburn was back uh, on top of Hollywood. Great. So it really made a big difference for her. So she can thank Howard Hughes for I that. I didn't know she was box office. Uh, uh, you know. She was at that point in her career. Hmm. Uh, she had a couple of real bad bombs. And she was supposed to be difficult to work with, you know, like Betty Davis, all yeah. those really great actresses. You know, at the time, you know, if, if you were a strong woman back then, you were considered difficult. Uh, of course. So I think that's part of the reason, too. Right. The last movie, which yeah. I think you were surprised by, but uh-huh. I have to tell you, as far as the romantic comedy goes, it's one of my favorites. And it's The Wedding Singer, mm. 1998 with Adam Sandler. Uh, I fell in love with Drew Barrymore. Who didn't? And Christine Taylor, who uh, was Ben Stiller's wife, who played Marsha in the Brady Bunch movies. Um, I tell you what I liked about this movie. And I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of Adam Sandler's movies because I think he plays one note. Right, he does. Uh, like Happy Gilmore, I really liked. But that was a one note, so that didn't bother me. This one... There was only a couple of times where he did Adam Sandler stuff. It's like he played a he, he played a real character for ninety percent of the movie, and that's what I liked about it. Uh, yeah. And and there's a, and well, I'll show we'll show the trailer, well, but there's also another scene I want you to play. But show the trailer so people right. can get a if you haven't um, seen it. The thing about it is, uh, it's Drew Barrymore that makes this work, and she well, did the, the same, chemistry work. The, don't you she think? did the same thing for Jimmy Fallon and Fever Pitch. Yeah. Yeah. If it weren't for Drew, because those guys both, I don't like watching their films. Like Fallon's good, but he's not he's not a good actor. And and like you said, Adam Sandler in this particular style of movies is one note. I know he's done right. Punch Drunk Love, and I know he just did this yeah. this safe uh, diamond heist thing. Everybody's yeah. trying to get Adam Sandler to be a serious, and he probably is a pretty good actor. He probably should have got an Academy Award nomination at least. But in this run of '80s or '90s or whatever it is, it's always one note. She makes this right. thing work. And this is right. the only Adam Sandler in that style of Adam Sandler that I love. I actually love this film. And talk about a soundtrack. And and, and the people yeah. around them in this film yeah. uh, are what make well, this thing. there's great cameos, which we'll get to in a second. Yeah. By the um, way, the director is Frank Caracci, who directed a bunch of Adam Sandler movies. He did it? Waterboy, like Ridiculous Six. Frank Caracci. Okay. Well, here, here, here comes the... Before the internet. Before cell phones. Before rollerblades. There was a time. Okay, 86. So I would have been... Yeah, I would have been 20, 21. I got married first time in 86. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Steve Buscemi's in there. Buscemi, Buscemi, yeah. Buscemi, whatever. Buscemi. There's another guy in here uh, that plays his buddy there on his left. Yeah. I, he's in all his movies. Yeah, did you ever see Grandma's Boy? <laughs> that that no. kid story? It's actually very funny. You're talking about the limo driver? I, I don't know his buddy. I don't know who he is. Yeah. He's also uh, the caddy in Caddy Shack. He is? The homeless guy. Yeah. He's in all his movies. Before you jinx the band and they break up. But that's who Drew Barrymore she, she was, is just. Th- this was like the first adult thing she did. I think so. I think this started yeah. her run. And she was adorable. Yeah. And that guy, that guy right him there, yeah. him. Yeah, he he's in a movie cat. called Grandma's Boy. It's just so good. Oh, there's <laughs> Julia, Julia, Julia. That's funny. Julia, Why is that funny? Julia, that's funny. Why is that funny? I, I don't know. I just <laughs> now the girl of his dreams is about to marry Mr. Wrong. That's grade eight, top choice meat. Yeah, yeah. Look at the DeLorean. Look at 
and also the uh, Miami Vice outfit. Right. You so wore there's, that. There's also, you wore that to Patty's yeah, wedding. I did. You I wore did. it. So you should, you should I be did. quiet. I'll have to send you a picture of that. <laughs> I, I think I probably have some. For the wedding. Yeah. Don just Johnson. just came back from California. <laughs> Yeah. He's more than a lover. Yeah, this this movie also ends in an airplane. I think that's the scene you're talking yeah, about. That's just didn't want to talk about. Yeah. And so there's also great cameos by John Lovitz and Billy Idol. Right. Great cameos. Uh, so you See, that's Adam Sandler. Okay, that's that's over the top. Right. But like I said, and this thing, she, 90% yeah. of the time he played a really sweet character. Right. Well, this is the one where he does and I I don't know if yeah. it's Yeah. That's did, what I like. Did he not it. write this? I forget how this thing. No, I think he co-wrote it. Oh, really? Uh, and you know, it's a Broadway show too. It was a big success Broadway show. Um, but it's just he. It, it was it, at this point in his career, it was the most real character he played, with just a couple of times when he does the Adam Sandler stuff. But yeah. for the most of it, you bought into it. You felt bad for him when when when. Uh, Drew Barrymore misunderstood what happened at the end of the movie. You really felt for him. And then that scene at the end, and this is the scene. I, have you got it queued up? I do, but I, it, it, you, you gave me such a long chunk of it that I, okay, I, so I, I can fast forward post, through. We'll, I, well here. No, I can we'll add it. No, where in the scene do I have to catch up to? When he comes walking out with the guitar. Is when the, he sings to so, her? So what happened was, uh, By the way, you're giving away. Vegas, mile she's so flying to Vegas right. to marry this creep. He ends up on the same plane and doesn't even know it. Now he finds out. And Billy Idol's on the plane and he's telling Billy Idol the story. So what he does is he starts singing this song over the PA that he wrote for her. And now she recognizes the voice and he walks out through the... Oh my God, I'm getting chills talking about it. That's Billy Idol there on the left. That's Billy Idol. Right. Okay. And it would work if not for her reaction. I mean, to come it. on, it's Drew Barrymore. And I she know, I'm telling you, she's safe. That. I know. This is but. it, okay? For me, this is the scene in the movie why I love this movie. The way she plays it, like you can see how much she loves him. Even let you hold the remote. The remote control. Right. But that's all true. And Billy Idol and his yeah. buddies get this guy. <laughs> Oops. We're going to get copyrighted. Me, sir, I have to no, because we're talking. <laughs> oh. It's all about the AI. So, so this is yeah. great. And Billy Idol is hilarious in this movie. Yeah. Oh, chicken or fish. Uh, Don't make me hurt you, Billy. Chicken or fish. You better get out of my way, Billy. You're going to get hurt. Oh, yeah. Don't you talk to Billy Idol. <laughs> Look, he's got the Billy Idol t-shirt. <laughs> right. No, but again, it's Drew Barrymore. It's, it's her Drew. reaction. I know. It. Right. I know. But it was just, you use, you've you used this word a couple of times, but the best way to describe that scene is how sweet it is. Yeah. And and he's, you know, he doesn't play it for laughs. He plays it sincere. And her reaction to the, even the words of the song, when she laughed at that one line, it's just so genuine. And for me, that's that's what I want out of a romantic comedy. And that's why I love this movie. And, and like you already mentioned, the soundtrack is phenomenal because that's the music you know, when I was that age, that's the music we listened that's to. That's in my. Like I have a. I have a CD player, actually, physical media, and that album is CD player worthy. It has to be play, CD player worthy. Yes. Oh, very nice. So I got I got a few of those in there, and that's one of them. Oh, good. Yeah. So so those were my top three. Those are the ones I recommend for my taste in uh, in romantic comedies. Now, I've got some uh, some. B, you said B choices. You already said say anything, which I also right. agree with. Uh, that was on my list. Um, so Breakfast at Tiffany's mm -hmm. with Audrey Hepburn and George Pappard. Uh, it's, uh, it was 1960, directed by Blake Edwards. Love that movie. She is amazing in that movie. Disney, Enchanted. 2007. Yeah, I saw, I saw that on love, your list. What is that? Fell in love with Amy Adams oh, she was in that cute. movie. You know where I fell oh in love God. with her? In uh, the um, the Smithsonian film, the uh, the ones that um, Ben Stiller did. Oh, oh yeah. She played Amelia Earhart. Yeah, oh, my God. She was adorable yeah. as well, Amelia Well, for Earhart. me, it was enchanting. Yeah. I love that movie because that that scene at the end where he- I've uh, never seen it. Well, uh, loves, loves Kiss. Or, or I think that's what it's called. And that's when she re he realizes the whole movie, he doesn't want to admit he loves her. And in this one scene, he admits it. It's just, oh, I get chills. I love I love that movie. Susan Sarandon's in it too, also. And it is a Disney movie. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And finally, 
because I like the old ones. 1934s, It Happened One Night, Clark Gable, Carol Lombard. A couple of things about that movie. Clark Gable did it as punishment. He was loaned out by his studio, and they thought he was getting too big in the head, so they loaned him out to this B movie. Uh, Carol Lombard only did it because she got 50000 a week, which was the uh, biggest thing, she, most money she ever got in such a short amount of time. It was a four-week shoot. So neither one of them wanted to do it, even though it was being directed by Frank Capra, and it swept the Oscars. It won the Best Actress, Best Actor, Best Director, Best Picture, and Best Screenplay. So you can't predict anything. In fact, Carol Lombard was, on a, was getting ready to go on a train on a trip the night of the Oscars because she didn't think she had a shot of winning. And they called her because in, in those days, they knew who won prior to the broadcast. They called her and said, you need to get there. And she showed up in a traveling suit. Uh, but it's a, again, it's, it's a lot like Philadelphia Story. It's rapid fire. It's a very funny movie. Uh, just And I love, I love most anything Frank Capra. But if you want to look at old movies, romantic comedies, I recommend those. But for me, those are the ones that I, I pick. But the three I recommend, <clears throat> once again, your three are High Fidelity. High Fidelity. Say Anything. Say Anything and Yesterday. And yesterday, mine were Philadelphia Story, When Harry Met Sally, and The Wedding Singer. And if you are in a romantic comedy mood, any one of those movies. In fact, I would say any of the ones we talked about tonight. Especially um, Bound. Especially Bound. Good. Hey, uh, I think uh, excellent choices. Uh, nothing nothing that would fit better on Movie Strange. So that they were kind of Well, Cycles me. in Love, I almost brought to this as well. Because uh, that, that is a romantic no. love story, uh, kind no, of a like Harry, when no, Harry no, Met no, Sally no, vibe no, in that no, one no. as well. Cycles in Love, by the way, playing on moviestrange.com, moviestrangeshow.com. And, I just and did YouTube. a Movie Strange episode. It was, uh, well, it was it's in the actually, can. It's going to be out for a while. It was it's fun not, to do. It's not going to be out we, for a well, while. Well, it might not make broadcast because there was, uh, Ralph mentioned that there was a little too much energy that I brought. A lot so, too much. And that's, uh, uh, that comes out yeah. down the road. You know, we had to do these things in order. So, Well, um, anyway. sometimes you can put some in front of the other. And that right. was a pretty good one, actually. It was a woman's prison movie. Or, excuse me, Reform School Reform School girl Girls. Movie. Had your girl yeah. Sybil Danning it in wasn't, it, who you couldn't stop uh, talking Sybil about. Sybil Danning. Right. Uh, well, speaking and of we also, I comedy. also found out that your, your wife, Rose, <laughs> likes the ladies in prison films, which I she, didn't know about. She, she's a big fan I've just of become, women in prison. I've become really interested in Rose's movie habits. <laughs> 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 well, that was good. That was uh, more much more traditional than I thought it was going to be. So, uh yeah, I think that's good. It's hard, you think, know. Again, uh, it's always hard. This is I've said this before. Like when everyone asks about Jaws being your favorite film, it's like there's so many in every category, and I know I missed like eight thousand of these. But out of those, the ones that I talk about are the ones that just uh, you know, the first three that come to my that come. To well, it's my funny because I asked Rose only Rose, because I forgot about Bound. What's a romantic comedy that you really like? And she picked Dirty Dancing. Ah, which see, is actually, another one, but that's which the, is a which is a great pull. That's I mean, not that's a, a rom com. Now, that's a yeah. I think that's a romantic comedy. That's not a comedy. That's serious. Of course, it's a, no. They there's talk, a lot of funny stuff in that. Yeah, movie. but there's abortion Listen, going the fact on in that there. Patrick come on, Patrick Swayze is attracted to her. Is oh, come funny. on. That is not. A, I I challenge you that that's a comedy. It yes, it, it comes out funny because nobody puts baby in the corner and all the stupid stuff that goes on. But that is no comedy. Dancing with the she shows up with the watermelon. I mean, look, we do this every time. I brought but, the watermelon. But you look at the list of two hundred top rom coms and you realize like there's stuff that we completely passed over. Yeah. That came out in the early two thousands, two thousand five, two thousand six. That I just didn't even know about the proposal and some of these other films that. But again, if you if you have to look at a list to remind yourself, then well, they're not the ones that resonate. Well, I'm not going to lie. I did that because it makes you go, oh, my God, that no, one's I at totally the top. No, I totally get it. So. But like when we talked about this category, right away, things started jumping in my head of course. about yes. what, what movie. And, and, and now now going looking at like the top 25, it helped me branch out a little bit with the B selections. But it's the scenes in the movies that do it for me. I'm going, you know, like when Harry met Sally, I that know. ending, it's a, you know, that, the the wedding singer, that ending. Cusack holding the thing up yesterday. Yeah, exactly. You should. And you, I love so, that movie. Wait a great, Again, you've great. never seen Yesterday. No. Wow. I haven't. You should but, watch it. But I'm going to watch it because uh, that, that, that reminds me. Really so Bound is not, see, that's what confused me. Bound is not a rom-com. That's well, why. it's just super romantic. It's just not a comedy. Yeah, it's definitely romantic. I mean, Gina Gershon can swing a swing a, a oh. wrench. You should see her swing a wrench. Gina and, Gershon. And she was in Cocktail too. She was the try to keep Tom Cruise. Well, she Tom was Cruise in, was her kept man. She was in Showgirls. 
I mean, yeah. We, well, we that's kind of that's, that's definitely a, a comedy. Movie. That's, that's a, a comedy. movie strange movie. That's no, a that's movie a comedy. Movie. No, I don't think so. Yeah, no, and it's an unintentional comedy. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, Ralph, great job. Yep. I got to say, I'm, I was surprised by your picks. Okay, very traditional. I, I, I love that. I know, and that's good. Okay, and I think part of that is your relationship with Maria is blooming. No, and I it's like just. You. Okay, please, a don't do that to her or me. Okay. These are ones I've had long before I met Maria. Now, we did watch yesterday together. I'm not going to lie. And she enjoyed it, of course. And, uh, and I'll get her to watch Bound at some point. <laughs> uh, have her watch a Philadelphia story, please. Okay, whatever. Rapid Jesus. fire dialogue. Okay. Like the thing from another world. <laughs> exactly. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you next week. I don't know what the genre is going to be. It's a surprise. But, uh, we, Always a surprise. You guys seem to... You guys, we have gotten feedback. You guys like the genres. We talk about a lot of different movies. So we'll keep doing that every now and then. We'll do a movie review. We appreciate you guys watching. Again, Ralph, subscribe. Hit right the notification. I'm right going to get there, higher. There. I'm get higher. Right Hit there. the notification button yep. and, uh, and, and share. Okay? Thanks, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. All right, have a good week, everybody. John, have a good week. Get the theme out. It moves. It marks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.